Welcome to Module 2 of the Megat Sensing Systems Industrial Vibration Training Course, Transducer Types and Proper Selection. In this module, we will cover what is a transducer, accelerometers, velocity sensors, displacement probes, 4 to 20 milliamp sensors, and transducer selection. A transducer is simply a mechanism that converts a mechanical event into an electrical signal. A vibration transducer works as a mass and spring which outputs an electrical signal proportional to the vibration exciting it. In the world of vibration, there are four types of transducers that are the most common. Accelerometers, velocity sensors, displacement probes, and 4 to 20 milliamp sensors. An accelerometer uses a piezoelectric material or a crystal as a sensing element or the spring in a spring mass system. A mass loads the sensing element and the crystal creates a charge output when compressed and released. This charge is fed into the electronics which convert it to a voltage output. This voltage output is what we measure to quantify the vibration. There are two fundamental types of accelerometers. Charge mode in which the sensing element is separated from the electronics an integrated electronic piezoelectric, or IEPE, which have the sensing element and the electronics in the same housing. IEPE accelerometers can be designed in many ways, but the most common are shear and compression designs. With charge mode accelerometers, the electronics are charge amp and the sensing element are two separate components. This allows them to be used in much higher temperature areas as the electronics are typically the limiting factor in regards to temperature. The output of the sensing elements is in picocoulombs per G, which is then fed into the charge amp. The charge amp converts the signal to the desired voltage output, or millivolts per G. The temperature range of a charge mode accelerometer ranges from 260 degrees Celsius to 700 degrees Celsius. A typical IEPE accelerometer limit is around 150 degrees C. IEPE accelerometers are typically either a shear design or a compression design. Here we have an example of a compression design. A compression design places a mass on the crystal creating a preload. When vibration occurs, the mass will compress and release the crystal, which creates a charge, which can be measured. The charge is fed to a circuit board, which converts the signal to a voltage output. Compression accelerometers are easy to build, but do come with some drawbacks. They are susceptible to pyroelectric effect, which is a low frequency output with rapid temperature changes, cross axis vibration, and base strain. Probably the most commonly used design is an IEPE shear design. This design attaches a crystal to the base, and rather than preloading the crystal with a mass on top of it, the mass is placed on the sides of the crystal. When vibration occurs, the mass creates a shearing effect on the crystal instead of compressing it. This creates a charge output, which is fed to the circuit board, which converts the signal to a voltage output. This is a more complex design, but offers several advantages. It is less acceptable to pyroelectric effect, cross-axis vibration, and base strain. Accelerometers have both their advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of accelerometers are a very wide frequency, wide amplitude range, broad temperature range, velocity or displacement outputs are available, and they are rugged with an industrial design. Disadvantages include they are not completely responsive to zero hertz, and the internal amplifier limits the temperature. Generally speaking, there are two types of velocity sensors. Piezo velocity, which is very similar to an accelerometer and uses a piezo sensing element, or velocity or moving coil, which detects the vibration using a transducer that has parts to physically move. A piezo velocity sensor has the same basic design as an accelerometer. It uses a piezoelectric crystal as a sensing element and then converts the signal to a velocity output using the integrated electronics. A velocity coil uses the physical movement of a magnet to create an output through coils. This type of transducer does not require an external power supply. The lack of electronics allow for very good signal-to-noise ratio. However, the moving parts are susceptible to wear over time. 
Using velocity sensors have their advantages and disadvantages. Some of the advantages include no external powering required, powerful signal output, easy to use, and the ability to operate at elevated temperatures with the lack of electronics. Some of the disadvantages include not useful for very low or very high frequencies, moving parts will wear out, mounting orientation may be important, the size will typically be larger, and they can be affected by magnetic fields. There are two types of displacement probes, non-contact and contact. Non-contact probes are eddy current probes which use RF to perform the measurements, and contact probes physically contact with what is being monitored. An eddy current probe is a sensor used to measure the distance between the tip of the probe and a metal target. This is a relative measurement, unlike an accelerometer or velocity transducer. They are also called proximity probes. An eddy current probe is made up of three match components, the probe, the extension cable, and the charge amplifier. A voltage is applied to the charge amplifier, which causes an RF signal to be generated. This RF signal is transmitted to the probe through the extension cable. A coil inside the probe tip serves as an antenna and radiates high frequency energy into free space. Any conductive material within the field absorbs the energy and causes the output of the probe to decrease proportional to the gap distance. Proximity probes are typically configured in an XY configuration or 90 degrees apart from each other. This allows a monitoring system to calculate the linear shaft movement in either axis, shaft orbit or the shape of the motion of the center line, and S max, maximum vector movement in any direction. There are two types of contact probes that are generally used. LVDT, which is a type of electrical transformer that is used to measure linear displacement, and shaft riders, which is a device that attaches a vibration probe and comes in actual contact with the shaft, providing a vibration measurement. Using displacement probes has its advantages and disadvantages. Advantages include low frequency response to zero hertz, you can measure relative displacement, they can be useful as a key phaser for dynamic balancing and analysis, and reliable if properly installed and maintained. Disadvantages include they are difficult to install, they have practical limits on the higher frequencies, calibration is dependent on shaft material and specific components, and shaft runout and surface imperfections can produce false signals. 4 to 20 milliamp vibration sensors are loop powered. The power is supplied by an input card as part of a two wire system that supplies 4 milliamps. This 4 milliamps then becomes part of the output signal. Vibration is detected using a piezoelectric sensing element, which is subsequently converted to milliamp output and added to this 4 milliamp baseline. The output of the sensor is current output. 4 milliamp signal means there is no detectable vibration. A 20 milliamp signal indicates that it is the maximum vibration for its scale. Loop power sensors control the current flowing through the circuit or the loop. The sensor will have a scale range which determines how much vibration is proportional to a 20 milliamp output. This scale is determined by the physical design of the sensor. In this example, our scale is 1 inches per second, so 20 milliamps will equal 1 inch per second. 4 to 20 milliamp sensors have their advantages and disadvantages. Advantages include they are easily integrated into PLC, DCS, and SCADA systems. You do not have to be a vibration expert to use. They provide continuous monitoring, and they have a low cost compared to other continuous monitoring options. They also have their disadvantages, which include overall values only for vibration. They cannot tell you why the vibration has changed, only that it did. And they typically have a lower temperature rating than a standard IEPE accelerometer. When selecting a transducer for your application, there are several selection criteria you should consider. The data of interest, sensitivity range or dynamic range, sensitivity tolerance, the frequency range, mountain resonance, temperature range, ceiling, shielding, grounding, and certifications. When considering the data of interest, 
it is wise to consider the primary frequencies of interest. For example, do you have very low frequencies below 10 hertz, very high frequencies above 10 kilohertz, or low amplitude or high amplitude events? No one sensor fits all applications. There are always some trade-offs. Frequency range, amplitude range, and or size. Sensitivity range is the sensor's ability to measure lower amplitude signals normally when a high amplitude event is present. This can be an important consideration. A 50G sensor will rail or clip if an event exceeds 50 Gs, while an 80G sensor allows for normal operation with much higher amplitudes present. A wider range lets us measure the lower amplitude events when high vibration is occurring. Sensitivity tolerance is how close to a specified sensitivity a sensor actually measures or outputs. While it may vary from one sensor to the next, the sensitivity tolerance of a particular sensor will be consistent over time. A sensor with a 5% sensitivity tolerance specified to output 100 mV per G must output between 95 mV per G and 105 mV per G. A sensor with a 10% sensitivity tolerance specified to output 100 mV per G must output between 90 and 110 millivolts per G. Tighter tolerances are important when comparing measurements from different sensors. The frequency range is the range of frequencies over which a sensor can accurately measure vibration. The upper frequency is usually determined by the resonance of the sensor. Some machines have specific frequencies of interest, for example, gear mesh, blade pass frequency. This can vary from machine to machine and also for measurement locations on the same piece of equipment. Slow speeds usually require a more sensitive accelerometer, which will have a lower upper frequency capability. It is important to understand the mounted resonant frequency of a sensor. This frequency can shift based on the mounting technique used and can significantly alter the upper frequency capability of a sensor. A two-pole magnet will have a much lower upper frequency capability than the same sensor, which is stud mounted. When considering the temperature range of a sensor, the limiting factor for most accelerometers is the electronics. Most electronics have an upper temperature limitation of 120 degrees Celsius. Some specialized components can increase this range to around 150 degrees Celsius. Applications that require a higher temperature require specially designed sensors. Using a sensor in an environment above the upper temperature rating will significantly reduce the life of the sensor. Sensor sealing is one of the most important attributes that contributes to the longevity and repeatability of a sensor. Sensors typically fail due to the electronics. Electronics failures is caused by exposure to the atmosphere or environment. The less exposure a sensor has, the longer the life. Not all hermetic seals are created equal. Helium leak testing of the hermetic seal is the best detection method. It is 10,000 times more sensitive to problems than the standard bubble test. For the longest lasting sensor with minimal sensitivity drift, insist on helium leak testing. In a typical plant environment, EMI and RFI shielding is very important. Shielding protects the vibration signal from outside interference, which can lead to erroneous data, such as radio frequency interference from walkie-talkies and electromagnetic interference from inductive fields. There are three factors in a well-shielded system. An internally shielded sensor, an appropriately shielded cable assembly, and properly grounded sensors and cables. There are typically two methods of grounding sensors, case isolation and case grounding. With case isolated sensors, the sensing element and electronics are electrically isolated from the system they are connected to. Many online systems require case isolation to prevent ground loops. With case grounded sensors, the system that the sensor is connected to provides the grounding. This is fine for portable data collectors, but should not be used with online systems. Improper cabling can negate proper sensor grounding. Certifications can be a very important consideration depending on the environment a sensor will be operating in. There are many different certifications, but the most common are CE, which certifies that a product has met EU consumer safety, health, or environmental requirements, and hazardous area, which has varying levels of certification, including IS, Class 1 Div 1, which requires a barrier, Class 1 Div 2, which does not require a barrier, and explosion proof. 
You have just completed Module 2, Transducer Types and Selection. Please join us again for Module 3, Measurement Types. You can visit us at www.wilcoxon.com or call us directly at 1-800-WILCOXON.